Usman, teaches English and religious education at Gymnasium Veit Shushim, coordinator for reduction of study time in the G9 and team leader in the school trial of the Ministry of State for Education. Um, one of the fascinating things uh, about Orika, one among many, is that she is also a permanent member of the e-learning team. So she's a person who really has a lot of professional focus on the issues uh, we're dealing with and with the interaction between teachers, between teachers and students and within the community, the educational community in Germany dealing with this, plus her, her international expertise. So without further ado, I will pass it on to Ulrika. Please. All right. Thank you, John. Thank you for the introduction. And like I said before, it was a pleasure to listen in on the first group already. And I do think um, that I can hopefully enrich and enhance now the beginning um, of today's uh, sessions. And as you can see, my uh, keynote will be about forms of transition or possible forms of transition when teaching in the pandemic. And I decided to uh, work in three parts. So the first part will be very brief, just about the introduction about um, what I do and what this e-learning team is in the state of Bavaria. Then in the second one, I'll be touching uh, some of the challenges um, that we were all facing as teachers and I think that um, there are many aspects and probably many more even. And then in the third part, I'd just like to also give uh, a positive outlook on things and, you know, the glimpse of hope that we all feel and that hopefully we uh, can all use from now on. Okay, so the first part really, um, I titled from expert to helping colleagues and training other experts, because before the pandemic, um, we worked in an e-learning team in the state of Bavaria. And my school is set in the district of Unterfranken, so that's Lower Franconia. It's a small um, city outskirts of uh, Würzburg. So Veitzöchheim is um, a very nice small community. And um, it's a very nice and pretty new school because my school will this year be only 20 years old. So now what happened before the pandemic or what did we do? I don't know if this is uh, also the case in other countries um, internationally, but um, in Germany, in the state of Bavaria, we have a so-called consultancy for digital education. And um, this is for secondary schools, for example. The school that I teach in is also a secondary school. And in my e-learning team, we are five permanent members. We're all teachers, all educators. And um, these um, consultancies for digital education can also be found in all of the other seven administ administrative di districts in Bavaria. Actually, I think we even have nine teams because two districts, Munich and the other two, they're just very um, big. So now they all have the same teams in similar sizes. So if you add it up, we could talk about roughly uh, 35 to 42 trainers, so all teachers um, in Bavaria. And our job was to support other teachers in Bavaria. And this is, by the way, um, the case offered, it's offered to all schools. So whether it's elementary school or middle school or um, primary or secondary teaching. And I think it's important to admit and to say that the Bavarian State Ministry of Education has really long supported digital learning. And one can roughly say for the last 15 years, but uh, certainly this changed a lot. And um, it was a you know, boost in the last two years because of the pandemic. And in Bavaria, there's one um, special task, I guess one has to add. It's called MEBIS. Um, you see it uh, on the slide. Um, the last idea is M-E-B-I-S. That's how it's spelled. And I did look it up. So uh, now I also know what it means officially. So the ME stands for media, of course, that was too easy. And then the BI stands uh, for Bildung and in English that's education. And then the S is for system. So it's um, generally, very generally just said, a Moodle-based online learning platform. And it's more than a cloud. It's not just there for us teachers to uh, distribute the material to students because it's really also a learn management platform. And I think for the introduction, this might be enough. And then if you have more questions, 
um, especially also maybe on MIBIS and the e-learning team, we can come back to that later. All right. So um, the second part, as I said, I titled colleagues and teachers from users to experts, because I do think and I do feel that there is a transition. And this wasn't only within our e-learning team, that maybe if you want to say we were experts before and we helped other teachers to then become experts, it also left us with the question of, well, where does it take us now? So we had to find our way and we really wanted to help our teachers and our colleagues. That will be the first aspect. And the second aspect is that we felt, um, and these are the things that are listed, that there are problems and challenges, and I called it to the angst and einsamkeit of it all. And this, I guess, would translate best as, you know, to anxiety and alienation or anxiety and no one else there but you. So um, interesting aspects that we heard of before in the other uh, group's presentation. All right. So what happened, right? What turned other colleagues and teachers from users to experts? I guess you can start with the first idea here. Um, that during the pandemic, we had to rethink our structure of our e-learning teams. Because before the pandemic, we would uh, travel to different schools and we would be there and perform in-person training. And the way that it works is that, for example, the headmaster of one school, and in Germany and in Bavaria, they're called gymnasium. That's the highest type of school, the secondary schooling. They would call our boss in our team and then um, they would say what they would like to hear or what they would like to be taught in. So really we had to think of new structures because um, as we all agree the in-person training is very different to online training. We had to uh, rethink the structure of the so-called additional advanced training in teaching and uh, we did this now online. So um, also in the State Ministry of Education at the Alp in Dillingen, where Mr. Finster is uh, situated, that's also the biggest area of doing the additional advanced training. So we had to think of new formats then, um, and they had to be created according to the needs of Bavarian teachers. And um, there were different formats and different needs in different schools. And uh, the state supplied us uh, with uh, different forms that we could use for digital and virtual learning. So then what happened was uh, suddenly Mebis became a star overnight. And yes, admittedly, it had some backlashes at the very beginning, maybe at the very two or three weeks, but um, I jotted down the number and I actually looked it up. Um, if you think about it, more than 5,600 schools are using it in Bavaria now. And um, roughly there are over 1 million users. So that is including all the students at Bavarian schools and all the teachers using it. Yeah, and then the other uh, factor that we help students and we help schools with, and we all had to think about, were communication systems with parents. And I'm sure you all um, experienced the same situation in the pandemic. Uh, you did not maybe have a communication system to um, work and to communicate with the parents. And in Bavaria, uh, we looked up the numbers in our team also uh, for this keynote. We had one fourth maybe that had set up communication systems, but then during the time of the pandemic, uh, the rest of it, so three fourths of the communication systems were set up. Next thing, sec second thing was the file distribution solution. This also had to be born, like I said, either via Mebis or we were allowed to use MS Teams, if you think of the Microsoft uh, uh, platform, or any other server that you could use and your school would set up. And then thirdly, of course, video conference tools. And uh, really in Bavaria, there were two that were approved by the state. One, um, which carries a cute name, is Big Blue Button. That's the one that many have been using. And then, of course, MS Teams. And they had to be, as that's the last aspect also on the slide, they had to be 100% uh, percent, um, proven for the protection of data privacy here in Bavaria and Germany. And um, I guess some of the things you can relate to and others um, might be things that you are still working on. But if we have more time in the Q&A session later, we can get back to some of those then. All right. Um, the next idea, and I think that this is really interesting, I tried to sort of categorize it 
how can we differentiate all the problems and challenges to this feeling of anxiety and alienation. And so you will now see uh, six different slides. And the first two will be about psychological challenges and the next two about pressures and the last two about how did this change? How did this socio-cultural experiment change? And I always refer to both sides, or I try to do it, to the teacher's side and then to the student's side. And um, you will also see that this is just a set of issues. So sometimes it's the same set of issues for both teachers and students, and sometimes it's not. But uh, like I said, it's not set in stone. And of course, it's open for discussion. And maybe this will give you some input and ideas for the Q&A later. All right, so for the teachers, for um, some psychological challenges that we have to or had to face can be put into these categories, adjustments and strategies, and then thinking about our own health and health and emotions. Now, if you think about it, um, at least for us in Bavaria, Germany, generally saying there was the feeling of constant adjusting and really a new definition of our work as a teacher. But you also had to adjust both um, to the in-person needs, the students at home, and then the online at home needs. So you felt as if you were torn in between at some uh, times. And then you had to adjust to a new fear. Um, and that was felt differently because we could not personally connect to the students sometimes of the students falling behind. And then the other adjustment was about the issue of the technical equipment and that um, many teachers felt that they were not uh, equipped well enough or still are not equipped well enough. Um, strategies that uh, some teachers developed uh, were probably pretty unconventional teaching strategies, but I also see it as an advantage. And you also had to find strategies to have enough patience with yourself. I don't know if you agree, but patience, I think, is one thing that I wish that could be just, you know, poured onto me from heaven because I'm lacking it these days. Um, and then mainly, I think, uh, also lacking it just with myself. So I put it patience with ourselves as teachers. Um, another one. I think it's very important it, that we have to find our own um, definition for our digital workspace. What might work for one uh, teacher won't automatically work for the other one. So what um, you might relate to doesn't necessarily mean that it works for someone else. And the last strategy, and I'm not sure if this is something that is known worldwide, um, we have self-testing for students. And this is mandatory now when a student in the state of Bavaria wants to return to in-person schooling, um, you have to self-test the students, meaning you as a teacher have to perform it not on the student, but with the students in the classroom. They're doing it themselves. And um, yes, it's also allowed that students could have a specific uh, sort of self-testing at home and then attend school the next day. But you're not allowed to come to school as a student, if you cannot show proof of a negative uh, COVID test or if you are not self-testing yourself in school, but you had to find strategies in school to deal with this. Now, health-wise, of course, um, we all agree on that. If you go to school as a teacher, you worry about your own health. Uh, you are afraid of the COVID infection and spreading uh, the infection amongst your family and loved ones and friends. At the same time, you worry about uh, your students that you see in school. Um, you want them to stay healthy. We all know what hallways look like filled with uh, maybe 250 students at the same time during um, the break. Um, yeah, and then what we already heard about in the first session a little bit, of course, the teachers stress uh, was growing and um, there are also more burnouts reported by teachers as of right now, and especially amongst younger teachers who just started teaching and uh, haven't had any other teaching experience, but during the pandemic. Some of the emotions briefly, of course, we miss our students and we have to deal with that. That was new, maybe. Um, and then another difficult situation and another challenge was that we had to or have to spread positiveness, even if not everything is positive, we still have to be the motivators and the idols, I guess, as teachers. Um, and it is also not always easy if you want to help out a student in difficult times, but you can't really reach him or her. Um, so 
in general, I guess some of this left uh, some teachers with um, feeling of powerlessness and of course uncertainty. All right, now if you look at the same aspects, but um, from the student side, and these actually are the same um, little categories that I came up with, but you might have a different um, content in it. So students had to adjust mainly in the field of motivation. Uh, you can all imagine what it means for a student to motivate himself or herself on this daily basis and successfully. So there is a reported lack of joy when they learn at home, of course. Um, another adjustment was also, of course, on the student side to find new ways of communication. And then also to reach out to your teachers, to your peers and to stay connected. And of course, we can manage social media as a positive aspect here as well. Well, what did they have to change in their strategies for most maybe? The first one um, that has shifted is that usually learning is the process of learning together. Now they had to think of new strategies. For example, they didn't have any immediate help and they made a mistake. If you think about it, that the group at home and the group that's taught at home, they try to learn something, but we as teachers aren't there. And this that left them, as they reported, with trying to find new strategies. Um, some reported that it was very difficult to keep the sleeping schedule and working schedule consistent. And I like that they admitted that, that some students said that this was one of the biggest problems. And also, um, they had to find a new strategy from working in their own room, because they say that just having the personal environment around them can be very distracting. And then lastly, and this, I guess, you know, it explains itself, but the way to school was something that they were missing. Now, if you think of another way of doing this, some reported that physically they actually left their home and walked around uh, the street or just up and down the street, came back home and started school as if they had walked to school. Health-wise, um, they say that they feel that they don't have enough social interaction. And as you said before, if you don't have social interaction and a personal connection with your teacher, this also um, can lead to a bad um, physical condition. So um, next to the fact that they don't have enough physical activity as, as some are reporting, um, you also find family troubles that are being amplified within this uh, corona uh, lockdown phases. And their emotions uh, are more on the side of missing their teachers and their friends. And since I'm uh, working for secondary education, especially the first part was interesting, right? That they say admittedly they do miss their teachers um, because uh, since they are in puberty and older, usually their peer group is the one group uh, that uh, they would miss the most. But yes, they're also missing us. Um, but a negative emotion would also here be the fact that they are afraid of missing out in general. And um, they think that lacking uh, a schedule is a big problem because yes, they do have one, but it's not physically experienced. So in Germany and in Bavaria, um, I don't know if you know about this, but when you have, for example, English and the next lesson is German, and then let's say it's uh, biology, for English and German, you might be in the same classroom, but then for biology, you physically leave your classroom and walk to the other classroom. And so um, the teachers in Germany are the ones who do the moving around from classroom to classroom and not the students usually. So since they are all just sitting in front of their screens, um, at least during the phases of the complete lockdown, they didn't experience this uh, schedule really. Um, and then to, big emotions, of course, that they felt were that they were scared and they said to never do things the old way again. And then again, anxiety and uncertainty. Uh, pressures felt by teachers and students uh, were amongst expectations, then pressures in the field of technology. I just called it general obstacles that were sort of thrown into our way and we didn't really maybe realize that they were there. And then when we saw them, found it difficult to overcome and then within the field of teaching. Now, if you think of expectations that we felt, um, one of the um, difficult ones was that you wanted to be fair and just to everyone. And this was difficult, meaning considering parents, students, and maybe your own um, ethos of work. Then you had yourself to be a new expert in this working field in the digital process. 
And uh, you also had to always constantly think of offering new extra input uh, to students who needed it, meaning this would be uh, for the ones who might work in honors courses, but also for the ones uh, who might otherwise be left behind. And at the same time, you were expected to manage all the workspace programs. And then I just left the last box blank because I'm sure that there will be many more expectations and that's why it says to be continued in that area. All right, technologically speaking, uh, we had to find fitting material and I guess we can all agree that when you want to do a virtual lesson, this is very different from an at home or from an uh, in person lesson. So generally the preparing the lessons was um, more of a workload. So as you can see here now in technology in the second box down it's the same ideas in the teaching in the last box in the bottom right corner so the. Uh, twice or three times the workload, I guess, uh, speaks for itself. But so um, you had to think of the fact that you had online or virtual teaching and in-person teaching and that each class is different also in virtual teaching and that um, you had to provide interactive lessons. For example, if you think of a sort of collaboration by uh, uh, whiteboards or such. Um, and then for the pressures that most teachers reported and that uh, we felt and we experienced were generally called complaints, I guess, by parents. And they say that um, it is difficult because uh, we didn't think about it at first, but now you have parents and they're witnessing their children learn as they sit at home, as they might face um, a problem or a difficulty. And then um, another one was lack of time to connect with students. You had your online and your virtual class and it was over and you had to click on the next um, video conference room and you couldn't really stay and wait and maybe, you know, chat and talk to your students after the lessons. Also trying to find best classroom management strategies is not always easy. And um, compared to the ones we're used to in the in-person in schooling, I guess, these also have to shift a bit. And some reported the feeling of actually the loss of classroom culture, because uh, you're talking into the void, you don't see anyone there and they don't see their friends and we don't see our students. Um, and then for the teaching uh, aspects, you know, in the state of Bavaria, we do have to follow the guidelines and then you have a new KMS with is, it's a new, um, you could call it order by the Bavarian state, you have to be aware of the ones that are up to date and you have to know them. And this um, is difficult because it might concern, for example, exams, can they be written, are they allowed to be written or not. And then we had to think of multitasking that was expected. And of course, this added to the stress of teachers. And at the same time, if you really think about it, you want to keep your students engaged and motivated. And you can try and do this through incentive programs, even if it's not the same um, as in-person incentive training. Uh, also not to neglect is the number of disruptions during the lessons as a teacher. I guess we've all been there. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Does it work? No, your microphone is not on. It's off. <laughs> the students comes in too late and anything like that. Okay. On the student side then, uh, other pressures have been reported and were experienced. So for example, in the first field of expectations, um, yes, they do feel torn between the parents and the teachers and themselves sometimes. They also think that managing the different teachers' requirements can be very tricky and difficult. And in the School of Bavaria, if you are, for example, uh, in year five, you might have up to eight different subjects. And this means eight different teachers expecting to uh, do the things possibly uh, eight times and in a different way. Then also they reported that um, it was difficult to have an asynchronous feedback from the teachers when they were at home because they do the work in the morning maybe and then in the afternoon they hear back from their teacher and of course they had to concentrate when the class was interrupted and this is also not easy on the student side. For the learning environment, I think that's one of the um, most important changes really that they say that they have experienced. They now have a very high level of self-responsibility um, that is especially difficult if they don't have adult guidance or maybe parental supervision even. And always trying to find a new motivation on a daily basis when they're at home 
um, of course, is difficult to establish when you think of their learning environments. And with this hand in hand come the numerous distractions at home, maybe uh, distractions at home, sorry, maybe from siblings or, you know, the phone, the personal computer, anything. And then their personal lives, right? Um, maybe they experienced something sad in the morning, at night, during the day, and all this leads to uh, pressures that they feel. Technologically wise, we know that it's the same idea that they say again, it's new and difficult for them to say and realize that parents are witnessing them learn. They also have to manage all the different digital devices. Um, I can tell you some more in the Q&A if you want to about them later. And then I put down really the ability of typing. And by this, I mean that we as teachers sometimes forgot that when you have a chat box open and a student cannot uh, unmute the microphone, they do need time to actually type what they want to say in the chat box. And then sometimes this led to the fact that it was too difficult for them, so they didn't even ask the question that they had. Yeah, and then a uh, big um, technological pressure that they felt was that sometimes they just weren't able, able to hear their teacher, and then they were missing parts of the lesson. Now for the emotions, um, these go hand in hand a bit, missing their teacher as we heard before, but very important to remember is the loss of a safe learning environment because they didn't know who would lean into the video conferences if their parents listened to them and whatever uh, happened to them and um, I guess also the rest at home. And the missing uh, of the times of fun when you learn together, because we all know that, you know, learning together in person works best when you also have fun and finding the joy in learning. All right, and then this last box, um, I just called it human costs during the socio-cultural educational experience. For the teacher side, um, I try to cluster it into public life, private life, teaching and the moral responsibility. Um, and I guess I just stress on the most important ones because the others are also left there to see and then you can uh, look at it at home when you pause uh, the recording. So um, in public life, uh, teachers said that the transparent teaching was a completely new feeling because usually we as teachers are in our classroom environment and the door is either open or closed, but it's you and your class and then you can start the teaching. And now you felt through the video conference systems that everyone could lean in and listen. You provide the material online so parents can actually follow your lessons step by step. And uh, I guess in Germany, at least, this is the, something that many teachers felt that we didn't feel enough appreciation. But um, another positive feeling, I guess, was that teachers don't need to fix everything. And that's also something that uh, was seen in the public. Private life. Um, I guess that we needn't to forget that we have to take care of ourselves and also tolerate to listen to our inner thoughts and feelings and also keep rewarding ourselves. And uh, for the teaching, and you've mentioned it before in the first um, aspect also that the expectations of schools headmasters and your own expectations might vary a bit. Um, also that, you know, being a teacher is much more than just homeschooling and no, not every parent can automatically be a teacher. Um, but also that we have to think of new visions and create new visions for the near future after the pandemic. And there will be many more, I guess. And then for the moral responsibility, if we find comfort, that is uh, something we shouldn't forget. If we accept that not everything is perfect, and uh, then we can see that we can probably accommodate quicker to new environments. And I think um, a wonderful moral responsibility that we carry and that has been realized is that we as teachers are needed to just be there and listen. Now for the students, um, I guess you see one of the biggest fears as you already talked about uh, when you think of uh, what are they lacking or what are they afraid of. Uh, losing their social skills, for example, is reported by many. And of course, uh, the fear of how to cope with frustration and sadness. And if you look at the expectations box, it kind of uh, it's kind of mirroring the other boxes that we just heard before, all that they really wish for, and this I think is wonderful, are empathetic adults. So it can be the parents and the teachers, it can be us. And then they also came up with new strategies and clustering it. I guess you could say that they were trying to find escapes from what is around them, also bearing to be alone with their thoughts. And they realized that 
if you change an expectation that you once had, this can be very helpful. And a lot of them report that they had to rethink and have to rethink their future. And then for the physical uh, exercise, they realized that in order to stay fit and mentally healthy, you also have to do physical exercise. And then uh, a positive realization is that parents and family are very important. And um, that if you have a permanent feeling of negative emotions, this can change again. And this then hopefully could uh, succeed in something that uh, you could succeed in something that before seemed impossible. And this last box, this realization, the positive one, leads me to the third part. And I do want to uh, end with a positive uh, full circle, I guess, that if you think of what have we learned from the pandemic, we can speak of this tra transition for uh, users and teachers in the future. And um, first off, it's just a short uh, overview of the hybrid teaching forms that we have in Germany. And then what can we gain from the pandemic? Now, just briefly mentioning, and I'm not touching all of this, in Bavaria, if we speak of hybrid teaching, we usually first had to think of a system of how to bring the two forms of groups of students into the school. So you either had a weekly alternation of both groups or a daily alternation of both groups within the course of two weeks. So when we speak of hybrid teaching, we found uh, special uh, reliable elements that is from the experience that we have after the month of the pandemic that um, the first reliable and foremost important one is choosing the fitting study material, then finding a smart way of providing material to all students. We used MIBIS, finding a smart way of collecting the students work also through MIBIS, um, then the method of flipped classroom, maybe you're all familiar with, we can talk about it um, in the Q&A part. And then of course, think of collaborative projects and the digital possibilities that we have here, then um, let's not forget the question of using different material or the same material for students at home and in school. Um, yes, you can stream lessons um, from school. And then um, the difficulty that you found here was that maybe the technical equipment is not there for it in schools and the data privacy guidelines. And then offering equal chances of learning at school or at home is something that we must never forget, even if it's very difficult. And of course, how to keep up um, the students' attendance during the online sessions. This is, uh, th these are the two last slides. So what can we gain digitally from the pandemic? If we talk about collaboration, I think that most of you are familiar with these online whiteboards but um, there are many out there that are very uh, great tools and you can use them without registration. Then the general term of learning through teaching and learning from peers, I guess is something that we can really um, keep up in the future. And then uh, generally trying to think of the situation when you have students who are ill at home, for example, because of a broken leg or you know, some other illness and they have to stay home for a longer period of time, which aspects can we use then? Um, and then if you want to work online individually with honors courses, and then the special situation in Bavaria with the V seminar in secondary education, meaning that you have students and they're usually in smaller groups, and then you can think of the um, online elements that you can use for these situations. And we heard this before from the uh, Erasmus group also. Of course, if you think of now inviting external guests into the classroom, for example, it could be company representative or an academic representative, you can do this through uh, virtual um, digital devices. And then also, if we think of um, other aspects for parents, teachers, for example, the Parents' Day could be held via a video conference tool and the online booking system, and the parents really liked it. We did this twice at my school now. Then there are these so-called open days at school where you can actually come to the school and visit the school and the school can kind of show off a bit. You can do this online also. And then what we're doing here, but on a national basis, um, the additional advanced training for teachers can be done online. And it seems to be from our experience, especially rewarding in workshops and smaller groups because you can adjust to the needs of the smaller group of teachers that you have in front of you. So the agile teaching through the smaller formats is really there. Then generally the online feedback split into feed up and feedback and feed forward. 
And as um, one of uh, you said earlier, the large scale teachers conferences can be held online and faculty meetings online. And then, uh, of course, agreeing, I guess we all agree on this, that this is always meant just using the online elements as an option and an enhancement and not a replacement. All right, I know my time is up. The last glimpse of hope, just briefly, is that okay still? Yeah, okay. Um, I guess we as teachers, because we're used to maybe the machinery that we're in and, you know, fulfilling the curriculum and we all have to do this, we should not forget <clears throat> about the glimpses of hope that are offered to us and that hopefully we experience and will not forget. And the first one I just called being brave in creating new ideas in teaching and learning. Um, the second one, I think, has to do with the testing formats. So we have to think of new ways of doing this, online formats or both in-person and online formats. Um, being flexible in terms of scheduling and material. And if you think of the mass um, media, how you can use this now, maybe. And then finding new ways of online collaboration, as we're doing here, as we could do in different programs, and then also as teachers with our students at home. And generally, I think this is something that is very hopeful that we can keep on strengthening the team spirit and the teamwork, because all too often we just like to work for ourselves as teachers, maybe. So this is something that was very positive, I think, and that we can experience hopefully in the future. All right, that was it from my end.